Are you ready to become a leader and change maker by getting your PhD? Ready to stop stressing and actually take action so you create offer letters instead of rejections? Then this is the spot for you. I'm Dr. Natalie Morse, and I'm here to help you get into your dream PhD with full funding. Let's go. Hi, I'm Dr. Natalie Morris, and welcome to the podcast. I am so excited to talk to you all about the top four things that they are looking for in a top PhD candidate. And really thank you for being here. It would mean the world to me if you subscribed and shared this. And if you want to go the extra mile and leave a review, we would love that. It helps us so much. And you can upload a screenshot and be entered to win a Amazon, Amazon gift card. Our small thank you to you. It really helps us do this work, and I really appreciate you sharing this. I do, from the bottom of my heart. Okay, let's talk about what PhD faculty and committees are looking for in their ideal candidates. Because if you don't understand this, how can you show up effectively? How can you improve your odds of getting into top programs if you don't know what they're looking for? It's like trying to hit a target and you don't, you can't even see it. It's really helpful to think about this from their perspective. They have a problem. Their problem is that they need people to come in and do good work for them. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. So if you think about it, each professor is like a CEO. They have their own little group. They have their own projects. They're responsible for getting money to do those projects. They have criteria that they're judged on by their boss and their boss's boss, and they want to make a good name for themselves in the university. So think about it like that. They have to decide where to spend their limited resources, their biggest asset, their time, which they're investing in you, and then their money. And if they get it wrong, because this happens, about 30% of people drop out of PhD programs, which is a high number, then they have to start all over again. It means that their projects aren't getting done on time. It means that they're not producing as much work as they would like. Their portfolio isn't growing. That's a problem for them. So they are looking for people that are going to come in and be very successful. It really is a win-win. When they help you, you help them, bada bing, bada boom. And so when you really think about it from their perspective, I think these four key areas that they are evaluating and looking for will really resonate. Number one, professors are looking for PhD candidates to come in with experience. They want you in an ideal world to hit the ground running. They, of course, know that they're going to mentor you and upskill you and uptrain you. And there's going to be a lot of that evolution happening but they would love if you could come in already being able to do some key things. And if you're not able to do those key things, to demonstrate your ability to quickly grasp things and run with them and get things done. The experience that they're looking for is an academic background in your space. If you are going from psychology to computer science, they are not going to see that as a fit. They're going to be like, aha, uh -huh, this person needs to do some other things before they're ready to do this work. So academic background could be undergrad, could be master's. Master's is helpful, to be honest. It just signals that you have a little bit more experience in this space, a little bit more time. Not required, but can be helpful. How do you market yourself effectively in this space? If you have good experience, how do you market that? Or if you don't have great experience, if you're going to reverse engineer it, what things do you need to have good talking points? So ideally, you want to be able to Ideally, you want something called the oh yeah effect. And that is where they say something and you're like, oh yeah, I've done something similar or oh yeah, I've done something just like that. That oh yeah effect instantly puts them at ease, instantly goes, they get it, they got it. I'm not going to need to spend oodles of time handholding and really trying to work with them and hope that they figure it out. They got it. So that means being familiar with key things that are done in your space. So if you're going into bioinformatics and you've never touched coding or never done Python or whatnot, they're going to be like, huh, I don't necessarily want to teach them how to do all that. So you, so when they're like, oh yeah, we did this recent project and we built out this pipeline, you're like, oh yeah, I've done stuff like that in Python. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I think where people struggle is they are like, well, I didn't do it completely on my own, or it wasn't that big of a deal, or didn't get published or whatnot. And we're not going to clarify. We're not going to discount ourselves and our accomplishments. We're just going to say, again, it's the skills, it's the expertise, the experiences that you have. So we're just going to say, oh yeah, I've done something. I've done something like that. 
And they're instantly going to be like, this person, this person's my person. Another way, if you don't have key experiences to demonstrate this is to talk about it. Like even if I never used Python or if I've never done a particular study method, like survey design, say I didn't do something like that. I'm like, oh yeah, I recently read a paper where they were doing that. And I really, really am impressed with the IRB process that they went through and how thoughtful they were in their survey designs. So I've actually taken a class on that. So I'm really interested in diving more in that because I know that how you phrase questions really matters. And so I think diving deeper into that will be really, really great. See, I still demonstrate my knowledge and my ability to pick it up and run with it. If you got nothing, if you're like, I've never even heard of that, this probably isn't the right the PhD for you, right? So you probably need to focus your your efforts on different programs. This is also like a good way to understand, are you having a good fit? Here's an example. Maybe there's a psychology group that works with trauma. So you can name drop how you have done work in similar spaces. Maybe you've worked with private clients. Maybe you've done it in research or in your master's undergrad. But you're going to want to talk about the similar methods that you're using or ones that you've used in the past and that new ones that you want to pick up. Talk about that. Let them know you know what's going on in this space. That's going to be really helpful. So again, demonstrating that you understand key methods that are going to be used in this group throughout your PhD, demonstrating maybe you've got some experience with that or that you're willing to quickly learn. Truthfully, everything evolves. So you cannot possibly have all the experience you need today to be successful through the PhD, and they 100% know that. They expect you to evolve and grow and gain new skills. To be fair, when I started my PhD, I had never coded in my life, right? And then I picked it up. I was able to learn it and use it and be effective. And that's okay. They're not expecting everybody in every field to have every skill. Do not freak out. But I want you to think about how can I demonstrate my best fit and what key areas do I really need to focus on that are impactful for my space. So every space is unique and I want you to think about it through that lens. Okay, if lots of people are qualified and have good experience, what next? How else are they identifying the key people that they want to work with? They're looking for people that are passionate about their work. Building off experience, you have to be excited and willing to dive into this work. And that is demonstrated through your track record. For example, if I say I'm interested in maternal health and health outcomes, and I've been a dental hygienist for the past five years, I'm not seeing that. So if you are in a role that you're not happy with, you need to get into a different role that's more aligned with your space to demonstrate your commitment to that, your passion to it, and how you're going to carry that through your PhD and beyond. This PhD thing is not a punch in, punch out kind of role. It's not like, oh, well, did my six hours. I'm done for the day. So <laughs> they know that certain times are going to be easier and harder. And that that focus that you need and that desire to get things done and really be excited about it is going to carry you through those hard times, those ups and downs. And so thinking about what you are passionate about, I don't want this to become a passion project, though. We need to be careful between talking about what we want to do with our careers and the impact we want to have in the world versus our own maybe particular issues. Of course, they're all related. If you had trauma and you're going to become a psychologist with working with trauma, you don't want to overplay that. That's not like your only reason for doing this. So passion comes in with experience. If you just have experience and no passion, they're like, well, this person might burn out. Vice versa, if you only have passion, no experience, they're like, well, this person means well, but they're not really qualified. They're not really going to be able to be successful. You need both of those to come together. This doesn't need to be groundbreaking. I think some people are like, oh, no, I I've just been working for five years in this space. How do they think I'm passionate? Because you were there for five years. If you didn't like it, you would have moved to a different space. So don't freak out that your uh, path isn't showing like you didn't quit your job and then go live in the mountains and study the newts for 10 years and eating only bugs. We don't need to go to that level. But they want to know that you're like, hey, I've been a scientist for the past five years and we've, we have done newt studies and I'm interested in doing more, right? Boom. Like that's, that's okay. How do you market yourself effectively showing that your passion and showing that it's going to come through and be effective in this PhD? First, talk about your long track record. Again, doing something for a prolonged period of time indicates passion, indicates dedication. And so if you've done undergrad and master's and internship or things, that's a good, that is a very good marketing tool for yourself and your passion in this space. Additionally, if you can demonstrate curiosity and how that led you to do other things, curiosity is often goes hands in hands with passion. 
I don't get curious about things I don't really care about. I'm not like, huh, I wonder what the best way to clean my stove is and then spend five years figuring that out. No, right? It's like what I really care about maternal health. And like I spent five years going in that career path because I started when I realized my sister had issues with their pregnancy. And this led me to asking different questions. And then I got my master's of public health. And then I've been See, again, that curiosity of how it got me there is is important. Another example might be, hey, I'm working at Abbott Labs and we're designing heart valves. I'm an engineer and that's been great. But I really started getting curious about how the modeling actually worked, how we could do that better if we understood those dynamics a little bit better. So that's why I'm here to get. So that's why I started my role as an R&D scientist in that group. And now I'm here to get my PhD and go even deeper into that. Right. Just layer it on. The third thing that they're looking for in a highly effective PhD candidate is somebody who can get shit done. Boom. If you remember, their problem at the beginning is somebody who can come in, do great projects, create work that makes them look good, makes the university look good, makes their job easier. It's somebody who can get stuff done, even when there are challenges, because there will 100% be challenges throughout your PhD. And if you can't weather those ups and downs and figure it out, you're not going to be successful or you're going to take double the time. And then that's not fun for anybody. And they're not getting good work out that they need. They need to get it out in a timely manner. When you're thinking about this for yourself and how you're going to market this, what did you tangibly produce? What key things? Was it a presentation? Was it a journal article? Was it a workshop? What did you produce and what was the impact? What did you actually do to move the needle here to get things done? Something I see people struggle with is that they do things with a group because we all do. Nobody does anything alone in a vacuum. Even professors are doing things with groups. So even when they say, I did this project, they did it with 10 other people. So you get to totally claim your work and think about what you did and the bigger impact. Say you did the data collection phase, but you weren't involved in the other stuff. Your work allowed them to create those publications. And then what did you figure out from that? And what did it create? Or if you were in charge of like data management or something, like, oh, I just made a database. That allowed other researchers to come in and use that effectively. And it led to four more publications. Wow. How freaking cool. So really think about marketing the things that you've done and the impact that you've had. If you have projects that are in flux or that are not, you really haven't gotten anything out of them. You have to decide, A, do I cut and run? Hey, this is never going to produce something. Or B, what can I do to move this down the line and get it over the finish line? How can I push through this and get something out of it that is tangible and impactful and worth talking about? All right, so we've talked about three key areas, experience, passion, ability to get shit done. What's the fourth thing that they're looking for in a top PhD candidate? It's somebody that they want to work with. It's somebody that's a good person who's done cool shit. (laughs) So in undergrad, they're picking you. People who are picking you will never meet you and they don't care. They don't have to deal with you for eight hours a day, (laughs) week in, week out for four years. Completely opposite for the PhD. They have to work with you and they want to make sure that you're a good person to work with. They don't want anybody who's had issues, who's going to make people feel uncomfortable, who isn't in control of their emotions, who isn't secure, mentally, physically stable, all these things that they're looking for someone to be successful. So right away, a good person. And you can demonstrate that through talking to them, letting them get to know you, networking, and they get the vibe that you're a good person. Also, in your experience, you probably have done, you probably should have done things outside of school or work. Have you volunteered? Have you done things in your community? If not, start. There's no reason right now you can't join a professional organization, either digitally or in your community, and have an impact. Don't just join and show up and like sit there. Where can you lead? Where can you take on a leadership role, even if it's planning the annual 5K or it's running their sustainability initiative? Whatever you can get involved in and take leadership of will be a big help for you. These are things that I call an impact project. So again, where can you solve a problem in your community? Where do you take initiative? I'll give you an example of what one of my clients did. She was a school teacher and in New York City and noticed that some of her students were coming in with their clothes not clean. And so instead of being like, oh, that's a bummer, 
She worked with her um, administration. She worked with other leaders in her space at the school and was like, let's do a clothes washing program. So boom, washer dryer in the school. What a great impact she was able to create. It got used. People are using it. They're loving it. It did not take her like hundreds of hours, right? I think sometimes we get worried that this stuff is undoable because it's, oh my God, I'm already doing so much. How can I possibly fit in another thing? It can be simple. It can be impactful. Just be thoughtful about where you're spending your time and energy. Another cool thing, demonstrating cool shit that you've done. Maybe you've done the Peace Corps. Maybe you've been a figure skating champion. Maybe you're, I don't know, but you probably have done a chess champion. You probably have done some cool stuff. They want to know that you have hobbies and things outside of work, that you're an actual human that they want to work with. So consider all of those things as you're preparing your applications and you're going to be way more successful. When you put all four of these things together, your experience, your passion, your ability to get shit done, the fact that you're a great person to work with and just going to be a joy to have in their team, who wouldn't want you on their team? Wrapping all that together, marketing it well, being effective, you can 100% do this and be successful in top programs. If you want help building these out so you are a more competitive PhD candidate, I invite you to work with us in the Fearless Grad Program. This is what we do day in, day out, and we get it done. We save your most precious asset, your time, your frustration, and we do it at a higher level so you're way more successful. Can't wait to work with you. If you want to send us an email, you can send it at hello at fearlessgrad.com. You can ask us questions, send us ideas for a future podcast. We would love to hear from you.